dia orang British, dia itu British, and also the the member of the British Parliament sebelumnya, dan kita patut iri kepada beliau, karena beliau seorang Inggris, tapi dengan semangatnya semangat Palestina, perbuatannya adalah perbuatan Palestina. So we will uh, listen to his uh, speech, Mr. Uh, Joseph Talawi, uh, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Distinguished academic staff, fellow speakers, my brothers from Aspak, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. I speak the language of a struggle, so there is no need for translation. This is my language. And I am re-energized hearing from our brother from Gaza, whose wife is from Ramallah, which must make for some very interesting conversations. Because it reminds me all over again exactly what we are fighting for, those of us who are involved in this struggle, and I have been involved in this struggle for 37 years. I know I don't look old enough, but 37 years I have been fighting this struggle, and I will fight it until the end, and the last word on my lips on this earth will be Palestine. Because the Palestinian people are the victims of one of the greatest crimes of the 20th century, now bleeding into the 21st century, and worse than the crime is the insult which is added to the injury where they, who are the victims of the crime, are called the criminals. And the criminals who committed the crime are called the victims. This insult added to injury is almost too much to bear. I was talking yesterday at a press conference with a sister who was on board the Mavi Marmara, the unarmed Turkish ship, which was attacked in international waters by Israeli pirates in a big crime. Nine of the brothers were murdered. A tenth was left brain dead. <clears throat> Dozens were wounded, hundreds were taken prisoner, taken to a prison camp in the desert, robbed of all their possessions. And I listened to our sister Noor, who was one of the survivors of the ship. And I discovered from what she said that she had been the one who had held the head of my friend Jevdet, Turkish journalist, who was shot through the front of the head from an Israeli marksman on board a helicopter which was coming in to land on board the ship. My friend was taking pictures, just like my friend is taking pictures now. And they shot him through the head and she thought it was acne because it was such a small hole in the head. His head, she felt that there was no back to his head. The bullet had exploded in his head and his life's blood was draining into the deck 
of the ship through her fingers. I had a heavy responsibility for the martyrs of the Mavi Marmara because I was one of the organizers of the ship. And I had to attend all nine of the funerals in Turkey, in Istanbul, and elsewhere. I had to meet with the grieving relatives of the nine Turkish martyrs. I had to throw earth into their graves. I spoke to the wife of Jeddah to tell her how sorry I was. And she said to me, you don't have to be sorry. Except for one thing. You should be sorry if his blood was shed for nothing. You should be sorry if his blood was shed in vain. But if his blood has helped to fertilize the ground on which something beautiful will grow, you should be proud as I will be proud. In the seven years, I have had many such experiences. And always, I am determined that this struggle must continue because the Palestinians have already sacrificed so much. And now we can add Turkish Shaheed to the long list of sacrifice. <coughs> Someone can get me water, I appreciate it. The Palestinian people have suffered so much in this great crime that sometimes some people feel that they have to give up. But not the Muslims. How could the Muslims give up? How could the Muslims abandon Palestine? Somebody said in my meeting last night, this is not only an Islamic issue. Of course, it's not only an Islamic issue. Of course not. It's a Christian issue. Bethlehem is in Palestine. Nazareth is in Palestine. Jerusalem is holy for Christians. There are many Christian Palestinians. Of course, it's an anti-imperialist struggle also. You know about imperialism. You were occupied for 350 years yourselves by a small European, tiny European country occupied 350 million of you. Why? Because they loved you? Maybe they loved you. That's not why they occupied you. Because they loved Nazi voting like Obama and me? <laughs> Maybe they loved Nazi voting, but that's not why they occupied you. They occupied you to steal your things. Any empire occupies anywhere to steal their things, except in the case of the British, where we didn't just steal their things, we stole them and took them as slaves to what we call the new world and made them work in the fields in chains while we stole their things. The British Empire was so huge that they said of it that on the British Empire the sun never sets. But that's because God would never trust the British in the dark. And he's right about that. You were occupied by European colonialists. And Palestine is occupied by European colonialists. That's the long and the short of it. One group of Europeans, the English, gave a second group of Europeans, the Zionists, 
the land which belonged to a third group of people, the Palestinian people. That's all there is to this story. It's not about religion, no. It's about colonialism. So it's not only a religious issue, but that doesn't mean that it is not a religious issue. It doesn't mean that it is not a Muslim issue. How could it not be? Al-Aqsa is occupied by foreigners. 60 years old. You are not allowed to pray the Jummah in Al-Aqsa. They will kill you if you try. The Ibrahimi Mosque in Hebron is surrounded by Israeli soldiers and settlers, some of whom enter the mosque with their machine guns to kill the people at prayer. Now, the question is, because you know all this, the question is, what are we going to do about it? It's good to think about Palestine. It's good to have Palestine in your heart. It's good to remember Palestine in your prayers. That's not enough. All of us has to do more. And this was more clear to me than ever before. The war against Gaza over Christmas and New Year 2008-2009. When 1.7 million people were locked up so they could be bombed. Imagine. All the gates were locked so nobody could escape. No women. No children, no old men, nobody could escape. All the doors were locked. So they could be bombed for 22 days and nights. And not one Muslim country raised one finger to defend the Palestinian people being bombed. 1.7 billion Muslims in the world some of the richest countries in the world, some of America's greatest friends in the world. The Arab League, which seems to be meeting a lot nowadays. Who knew the Arabs had a league? Now it's meeting every week. Obama's waiting for their decisions. But during these 22 days, the Arab League could not even have a meeting even to discuss what they might be able to do to bring it to a stop. The OIC 47 countries with a gross national product combined, our professor could tell us, in trillions of dollars and with Billions of dollars invested in the United States banks and stock exchanges could not even need to come to the aid of the people in Gaza. You might remember the little girl.